This video covers part of the content for the Cloud APIs virtual event, which is all about using APIs on SAP Cloud Platform. The content is available on GitHub, and this particular video covers the content for exercise two, where we'll get an introduction to important OAuth 2.0 concepts. Those concepts are fundamental to using APIs on SAP Cloud Platform that are protected with OAuth 2.0. So let's make a start. Let's jump into exercise two. And we can see that there are four steps in this exercise. Those steps will bring us through getting an overview, understanding the so-called roles in OAuth 2, grant types in OAuth 2, and then we can see where these grant types or flows are used when protecting APIs on SAP Cloud Platform. So starting with the first step, uh, we're gonna get an overview of OAuth 2. Let's open up uh, this particular link here in a separate page. And we can see that OAuth 2.0 is actually an industry standard. It's based upon work within the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. And in particular, the abstract that is given in the first part of this particular uh, RFC, Request for Comments document, RFC 6749, by the way, gives us a very nice overview of what OAuth 2.0 is all about. The OAuth 2.0 authorization framework enables a third party application or a client or a program to obtain limited access, that's key, to an HTTP service, either on behalf of a resource owner, typically a human, by orchestrating an approval interaction between the resource owner and the HTTP service, or by allowing the third party application itself to obtain access on its own behalf. So already we can see how OAuth 2.0 differs uh, from, for example, the use of HTTP basic authentication that has been used in the past to protect resources. There are many ways in which OAuth 2.0 differs from HTTP basic authentication. Just taking a couple here, HTTP basic authentication requires the use of a username and password. And it requires that username and password to be shared with any actor, in, with any human or any program that wants to access the resource or resources protected with that username and password. And once that username and password has been compromised, they're very, very hard to revoke cleanly. And also you can't revoke them partially once they're revoked, anybody or any software that's been using those credentials won't work anymore. So rather than just having a username and password credential pair with basic authentication, with OAuth 2, there is this concept of actors, different types of actors in a scenario. And we'll look at what those actors are shortly. There's a short book, Getting Started with OAuth 2.0. And the author, Ryan Boyd, describes right at the start of this book, quite a lighthearted way, why OAuth 2 is important. It describes a scene from the movie uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where uh, a parking attendant, a valet parking attendant, is given the keys to a really expensive Ferrari. It's, in fact, it's this Ferrari here. Uh, this photo has been taken by Daniel uh, Levick, and it's available by, uh, by SA on Wikipedia. Thank you, Wikipedia, and thank you, Daniel. So uh, the keys are given to the attendant, and the attendant basically takes it out for a joyride instead of just parking it in the garage. Giving the keys to the car to the attendant is the equivalent of giving the credentials, username and password to a resource. They can do anything with it. Ideally, as it says here, the scenario would have been that the valet would have been given limited access only to prevent such a joyride scenario. That valet would have been given access only to park the car nice and slowly within a few hundred meters. No access to open the trunk or the glove compartment, for example. That's a really nice way of describing how OAuth 2 differs from HTTP basic authentication, for example. So generally, the idea of OAuth 2 is to facilitate delegated access via tokens. Delegation is an important concept here. Access via tokens is an important concept. Tokens are given out 
not usernames and passwords. And these tokens that are given out have a limited scope. They also usually have a limited lifespan. And those tokens are either granted directly to the actor that has requested them or via interaction with a resource owner. And we'll see the two different types shortly. So in step two of this exercise, we're just gonna take a go at understanding the roles in OAuth 2. So there are multiple actors at play in any given OAuth 2 scenario. There are four general types of actors and they can be summarized as follows. There's the client, which is basically a script, a program, an application that you're building. And it's that application, that client that requires access to an API, to a resource, to an endpoint. Where is that resource? Where is that endpoint? It's on a server somewhere. And that's known as the resource server. The resource server is basically where the resources are, where the endpoints are that the client wishes to consume. Those resources may well be owned by someone. That someone being a human or even a system. So the resource owner is the human most commonly, or the system that has to be asked whether access should be granted or not. And finally, there's the concept of an authorization server. Sometimes the authorization server and the resource server is one and the same thing in smaller scenarios. On SAP Cloud Platform, they're separate. And the authorization server is the server that can present an interface to a human, for example, to ask them, do you approve or do you deny this access request? And if an access request is approved, then that authorization server is the server that issues an access token and also can renew access tokens based upon renewal requests. So those are the four roles, client, resource server, resource owner, and authorization server that are usually found in any given OAuth 2 flow where access to resources is requested. In step three, we can move on to thinking about flows in the context of what they're called within OAuth 2, which is grant types. So there are different scenarios where resources need to be protected and access to those resources need to be controlled. Some of the roles are used in different scenarios. So in the context of OAuth 2 with SAP Cloud Platform, APIs are protected using different grant types. Before we look at the grant types, let's just have a quick look at what a generic flow looks like. It's not specific to any particular grant type, as we'll see. But the diagram taken from RFC, the RFC section 1.2 the same RFC, but this section here, 1.2, protocol flow. The diagram really shows us generally the type of exchanges that go on in any given OAuth 2 grant type supported flow. So here is the client on the left-hand side, the program that is wanting to consume some resources. So the client initially makes an authorization request. That authorization request finds its way to the resource owner. Note again, Client is an actor, resource owner is an actor, authorization server is an actor, resource server is an actor, or roles. So the client makes an authorization request. Can I have access to this particular API endpoint, for example? The resource owner, in this case, grants access, in which case there's an authorization grant that's passed back to the client. The client can then exchange that authorization grant for an access token. The client says to the authorization server, I've been given access, I've been given a grant, a code by the resource owner effectively to allow me to access this particular endpoint. Please give me an access token that represents that. So the authorization server checks the grant code and issues an access token. Then the client can use that access token on subsequent calls to the resource server to consume those endpoints, to consume those API endpoints. Okay, and the resource server can check the access token. And if the access token is good, then the consumption is successful. So that's the general flow. Now, more specifically, there are four grant types 
or four flows that describe how APIs, how resources are protected using OAuth 2 that is described in RFC 6749. The first grant type to talk about is the authorization code grant type. And this is a grant type that involves a resource owner, usually a human. So this involves a request initiated by the client to a human resource owner, can I have access please? And if the access request is granted or approved, an authorization code is sent back to the client. That's this thing here. And then the client asks the authorization server to exchange that code for an access token. That access token then can be used to authenticate calls to appropriate endpoints on the resource server. The key thing to remember here is that first of all, a human is involved. So a human can make a decision yes or no. And secondly, the resource owners username and password credentials are never shared with the client. You're very likely to have been party to such an authorization code grant type or flow in the past. For example, if you've been asked by Google or GitHub or any number of uh, web services, will you allow access to this third party app? You've participated as a resource owner in this type of flow. Something that's more appropriate to what we want to do when we're exploring APIs on the SAP Cloud Platform is the client credentials grant type. This is almost like the other side of the coin to the authorization code grant type in that an access token is still what the target is, but the flow is outside the context of any sort of involvement from a human at all. There's no decision to be made by a human. In other words, this is where the client, the program, the script is acting on its own behalf. So think of it as if the client in this case is also the resource owner. Okay. And in this particular grant type, the client provides its own credentials in the form of, well, they're presented to the authorization server in the form of a username and password, but actually what they're called in this context is a client ID and a client secret. So like it says here, this is a very common grant type used for access to SAP Cloud Platform APIs, especially for automated and so-called headless activities in the context of scripts and other programs. There are two other grant types defined in OAuth 2, implicit. Implicit is basically legacy and not really recommended anymore. You can read a little bit more about it here, but let's not dig into it now. There's also the resource owner password credentials grant type, which is a bit of a mouthful. That's why it's also known simply as the password grant type. This is designed for the situation where the client, the application program and the resource owner, where there's a strong trust between where the resource owner really, really trusts the client program with their credentials. Because in this flow, the resource owner gives the client, the application, their username and password and the client uses the username and password to request an access token, which it then subsequently uses for access. One thing that doesn't normally happen or shouldn't normally happen is that the client doesn't store the credentials because the access token that is eventually granted can live for a long time and also can be refreshed. Just like the implicit grant type, this particular grant type is also considered now legacy. However, it's worth knowing about because right now it's currently used to protect the cloud management APIs on SAP Cloud Platform. So just before finishing off this exercise in step four, we can have a quick look to see where these grant types are used for APIs, for protecting APIs on SAP Cloud Platform. In the workflow API for Cloud Foundry page, we can see that when we choose to configure, let's log on, when we choose to configure an environment, there's a number of values that we have to specify in this form here to define a new API credentials environment. And given that it's talking about OAuth 2.0 and client IDs and client secret, we can successfully guess that actually what's going on here is we're creating an environment with which the API hub can carry out a client credentials grant type flow on our behalf or on our automated program's behalf. Let's go back to the authorization link from the core services API page. So let's just open up this link here, open it up here. And we can see that the core services are protected with the OAuth 2.0 password grant type. So that's the grant type that we saw 
here, the resource owner password credentials grant type. Note that, as it says in this document here, the use of this legacy grant type will be replaced by the use of the client credentials grant type in the future. And finally, let's go back to the authentication requirements that we saw in the previous exercise for the enterprise messaging APIs. Let's pick the uh, management API, for example. Let's copy that link address and let's go here. And reading through this documentation here, we'll see all sorts of information as to what we need to be able to request access to these endpoints. And we can already start to feel that given the fact that there's a client ID going on here and a client secret and a token endpoint and also a name and value parameter pair grant type e equals client credentials. We can also surmise from this that the enterprise messaging APIs are also protected by OAuth 2.0 and again, specifically by the client credentials grant type. So that's it for this exercise. Hopefully now we understand some key concepts in OAuth 2, in particular roles, the actors, and the grant types that can be used, the flows, and how these relate to how APIs on SAP Cloud Platform are protected. Thanks for watching.